Yeah. And this will be the beginning. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Merlin the Mighty podcast. Uh, hello. I've got Dickie here. Hi. And, uh, yeah, he just dropped by. We decided we'd talk about some stuff. And you brought an interesting question relating to tabletop RPGs and role-playing in general, specifically the process of DMing. What was that question? Um, so I'm, I'm running a pretty high-level game. For, uh, for a few friends of mine, a uh, few friends of ours, actually. It's okay. uh, Tiefling, Bass, um, Nick, and uh, uh, DJ mm-hmm. as well. Um, I'm trying to remember if I know DJ. David. Oh! I I thought he had a different name. He was the witch last he time. He was the witch, that's oh, right. That's gotcha, right. yes. Okay, um, on here. I don't know, it's official kind of yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's, yes. it's, okay. it's canon. It's, oh. <laughs> it's the accepted single canon of the Merlin verse. Yeah. No, it hasn't gotten that crazy yet. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe. Um, and uh, so I was I was describing like the game, um, where they're going in the next session, and uh, I I wanted to talk about like how kind of organically that came about. Mm-hmm. So originally I intended to just have this kind of like sandbox world with a bunch of different hooks for intrigue. Um, like, I've got a whole little political sector up in the, uh, up in the north east section of the map. Okay. Um, I, I drew out a map and with countries and named them all and had, so like, little... So extravagant. It is. Yeah. It's like 18 countries or something like that. Nice. Um, and, uh, I, I set them up in one spot, gave them a little bit of background, and just let them go. And um, like the, the first game, they fought a Nosferatu wyvern. Mm-hmm. Just murdered a town. Like, murdered the nearby town. Okay. Just flew over and sucked up okay. everything's the, blood. The Nosferatu, not them. Yes. <laughs> that's not yes. an evil game. That, that, yes, that's that correct. Happened, I yes. guess. Okay, gotcha. Um, I, <laughs> I set it up as kind of like a um, uh, monster hunter kind okay. of thing. And um, from that first session onwards, it's all just been like, what they wanted to do. Um, so, right after the first session, second session rolls around. So what are you guys doing? And Tiefling goes, well, I'm going to get people together for a crusade into hell. And I was like, you, okay, you know what, that's where we're going. That's, like, interesting, that's pretty much universally accepted as a good thing to do. It takes time, it takes resources, it takes investment. <laughs> a crusade into the depths of hell. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's I, a, I guess one of the ultimate goals for your typical you know, campaign, right? Right, your party. right. <laughs> like, and it, it's even reflected in, like, modern gaming, like Oblivion. Mm-hmm. Like, the entire point of that, from the very limited uh, time that I've spent playing that, uh, oh, okay. is to just go into Oblivion. Well, yes, the main quest is essentially to stop hell from being yeah, you're right. It's it's one of the classic tropes, and I guess modern medieval fantasy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you should play more Oblivion, though. Oh, absolutely. Like Oblivion. Yeah. Like I know it. it anybody that's played Elder Scrolls knows it's got its advantages, it, but it's it is not aged well. It doesn't look at all good. It doesn't and even uh, even Skyrim starts to get like that. A little. A like little. the skyboxes are amazing on Skyrim. Not not to get you off to a track. The, the only thing about Oblivion that I personally don't miss was the weird wheel system for like, interacting with people mm-hmm. I, and the weird facial expressions they did those, those weren't fun yeah. but, but uh, other than that I enjoyed it but yes essentially yeah. plot is similar yeah, yeah, yeah um, and so they uh, like I had this, all, this whole second session all written up like okay this is what we're going to do this is what I want them to do mm-hmm. as soon as Tiefling said that I was like that's so much more interesting than what I had Let's really? Go with that. Let's so you, go with that. So, so you kind of threw your plan for your plot out, yeah, and then just went with his idea and, and based it all on that. Yeah. Um, I don't typically do that. Actually. Oh yeah, no, I had no problems with that. Oh. I didn't have any combat that session. It's a four or five hour long RP session. Well, let me ask you this then: Did the players have fun? Yeah. That yeah. doesn't matter. They got to do what they wanted to do. They got to start doing what they wanted to do. Um, uh, for example, uh, Nick wanted to subjugate the town. Uh, the, what was left of the town that had just been murdered by the, the wyvern. Okay. 
and um, why did he want to subjugate them? Uh, that's his character. Okay. He's just he's well, just a, a a merchant. He's like a person who works the market. Oh, okay, he's, he wanted... he's a landlord. He's a land shark. He's just, okay, okay. He's like so he wanted to control them. economically take advantage of their situation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So he was like, "Well, you guys live in a desert. It's pretty horrible here. Let's <laughs> relocate you." So he took everyone who wasn't a criminal and put them back in the guild, like, into the city where the guild is. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone from the, who, from the town who was a criminal, because they're living in the desert. There are portals to hell. <laughs> it's, it's the worst. Why would you ever voluntarily <laughs> live there? They must not have had much choice without real estate. Yeah. yeah they were pushed there. You're right. Why yeah. would they be there anyway? Yeah, okay, it's sure. basically Australia. <laughs> oh. Um, Sorry for the one viewer from Australia. Uh, to be fair, my demographics don't indicate a high Australian base, but a lot of DBC <laughs> fans are from Australia, so don't, yeah, don't unsubscribe no, for that. Not, yeah. Okay. Um, if you made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> we're so self-indulgent here. Yeah. yeah. Um, At least I am. <laughs> well, then again, we were, you know, I think the best viewers of that, uh, what was it, the, the movie director's commentary? So oh, good. Yeah. So good. I think it was like 19 views. So it was... It was <laughs> But for those those viewers, <laughs> the best content. Oh, it's so good. It was good. But uh, um, go ahead. Yeah. So so after Nick split up the the town mm -hmm. into criminals and non criminals, he uh, he got word that where he sent all of those criminals was this place that was like really weirdly situated. Okay. And this was what I had originally written for that session. He sent all of the criminals to this place that is ruled by an ooze. Ooh. Like, an, a, like a hyper-intelligent ooze. This is very similar to uh, Gimli's game, where you encountered a, a colossal ooze that was kind of being worshipped as a god that... Oh, no, not, as, not a god. Just a, a, like, a like ruler. A, like a ruler, like a king. The ooze king. So the head of their political body was an ooze. Yes. But, of course, because <laughs> oozes can't speak... He had an interpreter. Okay. And I didn't um, think oozes were typically that intelligent. There is one variant. Okay. It's called a um, tyrant jelly. From a, it's it's a pudding. I think it's a black pudding. <laughs> um, the most delicious Pathfinder monster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's like CR twelve Mythic Rank three. Okay, tyrant jelly. That that's a new one. I didn't know yeah. about that one. Is that yeah. is that a what B series is that from? Is that a new thing or? Um, I'm not sure what Beastier is from. Like, like, I think it might be from the Mythic Adventures book. Okay. Because, because it is mythic. It is a mythic tier thing. Yeah. Okay, that's why. It's a uh, mythic game. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Makes more sense then. So what a, what a tyrant jelly is, is it's an ooze that takes control of a hive, like an insect hive, mm. and in the process uses the maturing queen of that hive as a rudimentary brain. Oh, God. It then it's got like an intelligence of 12. Which, by Ooze standards, is he's a genius. genius. He's, he's yes. astronomically intelligent. Uh, but of course, because yeah, like <laughs> it's just it's hitting me. <laughs> I I feel like that's a, that's silly, but that's oh, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, awesome though. That's yeah, that's very unique. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I haven't heard that too often. Um, and. Uh, they they get the ability to control swarms of insects and vermin. Um, so I, I wrote that like uh, years ago, this ooze came in with this ooze morph interpreter, mm -hmm. and uh, with a with a plague of insects the, and, and pestilence, they swarmed the castle and took over by force. And uh, the remains of the old king are still inside of the ooze. Ooh. And well, that's I, dark. Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. Okay. And so I wrote all this because um, in the previous session, uh, as they were going through the Wyvern's Horde, uh, Tiefling found a cup, like a goblet, that was emblazoned with, uh, with a royal crest. And so I was like, uh, and he, he took really, like, really particular interest to it, so I was like, okay, yeah, you want to you wanna return that? That's fine. I'll write that up for the next session. So I did. And then he came out of nowhere with, yeah, I want to go to hell. And I'm like, okay, that's good too. Oh, um, I see where you're going. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Very good at the long-winded build-ups. So you did plan out this very intricate plot. Yes. With a, with a very unique villain for it. Yes. 
and then your player just kind of indicated, hey, I want to go do this instead uh, because of something else that came up that you did plan for, and you just had to run with it. So, yeah, yeah. You know, in a way, you could, at the moment, sounds like you could just put it on the back burner or drop it completely. Right. Um, all right. However, what I didn't do was put it on the back burner. I okay. still use it that session. Okay. It, it was just like from the entire encounter down to something really small. Gotcha. Um, so Nick actually found this uh, this kobold named Mickey. He's a he's like a lovely bard, mm-hmm. and Nick was like, "Hey, I really like you. I'm gonna make you the king of this place after I kill the fuck out of this ooze." Mm-hmm. So we did. So now there's just a kobold. Sitting on the throne, <laughs> where the Ooze King once was. Um, Seems strangely fitting for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but um, this this is all, of course, building up to, to the question. <laughs> to I the, haven't to actually the, asked. The inevitable, the inevitable podcast question. Yes. Topic one. Hold on. This, just just for my own amusement. Yeah. Let's just make sure. Oh this is yeah. Recording. Okay, what? eleven minutes. That's not bad. That's eleven <laughs> minutes of exposition. Well, look, you know, Joe Rogan, his podcast is like three, four hours. So yeah, they're not even really that structured. So. Yeah, exactly. You know. it, this is fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm engaged. It's good. Um, so, all of that to say, uh, what what kind of creative processes and storyboarding do you put into your games when you write them? Or do you go for the entirety of the game? Do you, you write the plot all at once? Do you give just an initial hook and the end product and let the players figure it out themselves in the middle? Um, do you just go session by session? I guess, uh, wow, that, that is a good question. I mean, heck, who's being interviewed here? Who's yeah. the host? Who's, yeah. who's really turn, turn, <laughs> turning the tables? No, that's fine. I think I, I always like to do that. No, that's a good question. I guess I kind of am a, a veteran in some circles when it comes to, to gaming. Uh, well... I mean, uh, I don't know how... I mean, you've been gaming with me for quite a while now. You've been, yeah, you've been in... Uh, so, about four or five years, yeah. So, you, you, so you, know, you know my game style. I was kind of infamous for a long time being the guy that didn't really plan anything. I've actually only... Played, uh, the, I've actually only ever played in one game of yours. Really? Yeah, I was Feindal, the, uh, the tattooed sorcerer with the, the invisibility throat tattoo. That's the only one you ever played? It's the only one I've ever played. Trying to, uh, you got to help me out. Which, what was the uh, quest of that one? Who were the other players? Uh, I think it was. What were the characters? Uh, Gimli, Troll, Tiefling, definitely. Yeah. Um, was Can't Nick in that one? I don't think he was. I'm just, try, I'm just trying to remember what what was the plot. You'll have to refresh me because I've I've ran quite a few games. I'm guessing it was a Pathfinder one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, from what I remember, the plot was uh, trying to overthrow like an evil empire. Okay, well, uh, I have that's actually my favorite plot to use. Oh, is it? I, I love. I always love the uh, a lot of the the old Final Fantasy games. Kind of use that. Um, obviously, a lot of like the Tolkien stuff is about like some massive war going on. Right. I tend to like to use that as one of my standard backdrops for Pathfinder because uh, I don't know for some reason I, I always like having that that turmoil kind of being in the background for a lot of things if I want to keep it sort of politically charged. Right. But uh, then I sometimes also default to there's a portal to another dimension or my, my personal favorite is the pretty classic one where you either have some evil evil entity, be it you know evil king or a sorcerer who's maybe looking for some magical weapon or is trying to summon some horrible beast. Mm. So I, I stick with some of the classics but as far as planning planning it out I mean, it really depends on how I'm feeling for a particular group or with a particular style, what type of game I'd like to run. Uh, I usually have a good idea of what I want my world to be like and generally what I want to happen then. But I also realize that the beauty of it is when you have different players setting something up, if your plot is too rigid and you plan something out, you know, you might be completely changed depending on their actions. Right, yeah. And I actually knew... Um, I knew, I knew a couple of people that tried to run games that they would spend a long time planning something out and they wouldn't use any of it. So right. I, I didn't want to plan that far ahead. Usually what would happen is I'd have a general idea of where the story was going to go, but I would take it session by session. And depending on how things resolved, i try to direct it so it would go kind of the way I wanted to, Like, but I'm allowing some flexibility. 
Right. But personally, I like to kind of control the main plot. But as far as like specifically what happens each time, I like to be surprised. So usually like a day or two before, if I have the time, I'd sit down and say, okay, what's the next piece of this that I remember? And then I can uh, fill out the details as I go. But I don't like to plan too far ahead because it could be very different from my initial idea. Right. So I just like to keep a general framework, if that answers your question. Yeah. Um, and uh, another thing that I've been doing with this game is at the end of each session, I write down what the players did mm. and how that affects the world. Mm. Like what each government, what each major playing government in the world thinks of those actions. Mm. Because I don't want them to just like run around willy nilly and not have any consequences. No, no, that that's definitely true. You wanna you wanna have consequences for your players because if they do whatever they want, I mean. It's that, not really fun. No, no, because then it feels like there's no real threat, there's no real danger. Right. So it's like, yeah, you, you attacked this person, you stole from this person, or you said this thing to that guy, maybe this game, it might not bother you. And I feel like when you try to drop it like that, like like there is an initial, immediate consequence, there's usually resistance to that, like, oh, why did you tell me? Right. Well, maybe you should plant the seeds a little more subtly, like, hey, that could be something good. A couple games down the line... You remember that guy you ran into? Like, well, that's his brother. Yeah. He's going to attack you now. Right. Or, like, or he won't give you what you need to pass through here unless you do this. And if you hadn't initially messed with this person he was associated with, it might not even be an issue. Right. But, theoretically, depending on how you do it, it could still be enjoyable. Right. But maybe it would encourage the players to kind of think about their actions and how it affects the world. So, I mean, that's a good idea, you keeping specific detail of that. Um, without spoiling it too much in case they're watching... <laughs> it, I, I do actually like I've got an NPC who met with the party first session mm -hmm. be like one of the first faces they saw um, and uh, one of my players really took liking to him um, and at the end of the session he was one of the many who was killed by the wyvern oh. and so being that he's in a land that is like just constantly bombarded by portals to hell wouldn't you know it? A devil walked through one of those portals and made a deal with him for his life. In exchange for his life, he's now his own personal champion. Okay. Sometimes an NPC kind of really takes on a life of its own. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean that actually kind of leads into what I was thinking about my next question was going to be about that. I mean, how do you feel about that? The 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 life that an NPC can take on, the, the role that that can play. Because sometimes an NPC is just that. And they're right. just there to like move the plot along or provide some equipment. Like, oh, I'd like to go here and buy something. Right, like the blacksmith or the tailor or whatever. And uh, yeah, some, sometimes I keep it that simple. But, you know, I think that that's one of those areas where depending on how you do it, if you see, you know me, uh, I think... Uh, I mean, when it comes to the the DMing part, I, I do enjoy writing, but sometimes I realize it's very flexible. Right. I, I personally uh, really like the RP aspect. I, I love getting into the characters, especially the NPCs, the, the villains, and uh, just having a good time trying to make them all different and give them something distinct. And I, I don't know how well it typically works, but sometimes... Sometimes I feel like players may gravitate to liking an NPC because you because said something you've about it. Because you've got so much effort put into it, yeah. And other times, not so much. Sometimes it could just be happenstance. And, like, maybe if you keep an NPC around in the background longer, people kind of almost take a liking to him more. Right. And maybe that also depends on the type of uh, characters that they're playing. But what, what do you think goes into making an NPC more integral to the game? Do you think it is just effort or is it something else? I think it's a matter of just giving them their own quirks. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there were there were like two really um, substantial NPCs that I remember from uh, Dapper's game from like four years ago. Um, there's one named Jibbers the Kobold. I feel like I know who that is. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 exactly. I, I vaguely remember that guy, Jibbers. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's this mad scientist. He's an alchemist. Um, sounds very familiar. He's yeah. he's the little kobold man. He was like one of the first NPCs we met, hmm. and uh, he was like 
he, uh, if I remember right, he was trying to make the dragon born. He was trying to awaken Kobold's inner dragon like gene. He was trying to summon the savior of Skyrim. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> no franchise is safe from reference here. No. Um, so, like, you, you, you know how in 5e they're obviously a dragonborn race. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. I, I have not actually played any of the addiction. Yeah, you're not missing much, honestly. Well, I remember when you guys... Sorry, the side thing. I, I just remember you guys... Uh, I think Dapper got it, and Woody wanted us to all try it out. Yeah. And, um... It's... It, it wasn't... I remember, like... I, well, I know some people online. My buddy, um... Zoro got some people into D&D. And I think they used 5e. I think for people starting out, oh, it's, it's yeah. really, like, easy to grasp. Absolutely. But I guess for me, even though it took me a while to really get the hang of Pathfinder, it really did, um, I've gotten so used to that system that going back, I, I don't know, being overly simplified, I, I don't know, I just like what works. Yeah. I, I, I consider it saying don't fix what's broken, but anyway, yeah. go ahead. Uh, yes. um, if, yeah, uh, the Cobalt Breeze. Yeah, right. yeah, so, so Jeffers' whole thing was just making potions to further enhance his own physicality. Okay. His own physiology. He wanted to be stronger. Yeah, he wanted to be stronger, he wanted to be smarter, he wanted to be better. He wanted to be Superman. He, he, yes. <laughs> it's that, like, essentially. Um, <laughs> yes. And, uh, he eventually got there. He, he eventually did it. He wasn't seen from levels, like, 2 through 13, but then after, like, level 14... There he was, oh, wow. right in like right in the midst of the plot. Okay. Everyone remembered him, even though it had been like a, literally a year since we last heard him. Oh, really? Heard from him, um, and that's awesome. Everyone was like, "Oh yeah, it's Jibbers. I remember <laughs> Jibbers." Um, and like actually, that's it. I had a, a cohort for that game. Okay. So my cohort to my main character Rise. And Rise was a Strix. He was a clusterfuck. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing with them. What the heck's a Strix? They're like bird people. Oh, I like bird people. Yeah, yeah, they're really cool. Actually. Why was that a problem? Because you didn't know how to play them, or no? I just didn't know. Like, I I didn't have a really good grasp on the mechanics. Oh, the game uh, okay. so I was trying to do too many things with not enough stats, and I, it just wasn't it wasn't a good character. Um, I hate when that happens. Yeah. And that that's one thing I would say because I've made that mistake once or twice too. Uh, make sure you really understand uh, the mechanics of each character that you're making, the class. Yes, and absolutely. Make sure you fully understand that because that can affect how effective they are in and out of combat. Yeah. And, and sometimes they won't be as good because you didn't plan for it for him. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. De definitely, like, feel you understand the character you're going to be playing for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my cohort, Father Grendel, was a kobold. He was, uh, he was like a, a priest of the. Church of Apsu, mm -hmm. and Apsu was the lawful good dragon god, um, and uh, he he was a sweetheart. I I love Grendel so much. I actually recreated Grendel at a lower level mm -hmm. for uh, for another game that I'm running in college. Oh. Um, so it it feels really good to like be able to replay him and like explore and flesh him out a little bit more. Uh, did you basically like just make the exact same character? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, like essentially. Were the two games connected or is it just you said, ah, I'm just remaking him? Oh yeah, no, I just said I'm, I'm remaking him. Okay. Because nobody I'm going to school with knows about Grendel. But in your heart? In my heart. He's a continuation. Oh wow. So he's, would he be your favorite then? He's, at, he's like one of my top five characters that I've ever like played and made. Made and played. Um, you, you know, probably top three, honestly. Oh, now you gotta give me the other ones. I don't know if I know them. Um, I really like my character for Jaws game. Yeah, that's right. For Gimli's game. That's right. I'm, I'm like, level eight. When we level up next, I'm multiclassing into Rogue so I get sneak attack. That that last game was really good. It was. I, like, it was that, really good. That cliffhanger? I, it was really nice. I, I mean, I actually uploaded some of it on there if people want to watch it or listen, but... Man, like, I'm, I, I mean, I, he already kind of spoiled, he kind of spoiled a little bit for me, so I won't go into it, but like, man, uh, we, we are not in the best position right now. <laughs> I mean, we, we almost died the last time, you know, anyway, but, right. but yeah, we yeah. just, we just kind of happened on like the main villain, so. Yeah. 
Um, no, don't know exactly what direction that's gonna go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, go ahead. I, I think he's definitely my like number three in the top three. Grendel's number two. Number one. Number one is actually Rise, but after he got a rewrite. Okay. So after like four or five months of playing Rise, I was like, you know, Dapper, this this. My character's not really effective. I feel, like, overshadowed by everyone else in the game. That's awesome. I'm not really doing much. You know, I'm not bringing much for RP. I'm not doing much for combat. I just kind of feel like a dead weight. Is there any way that I could do something about that? And uh, Tapper was like, yeah, come on over after school one day. We'll do a one-on-one RP session. Interesting. So we did. And what ended up happening was... Um, Another one of Ter- uh, another one of Dapper's NPCs, and this isn't the other one I was going to say. Okay. About. Um, Kismet. He was a, a demigod of like tricksters and, and just mischief. He was, he was like a he's he's one of the per- he's one of those people that would like count the cards of the Harrow deck, okay. kind of things, and then just, just like play poker with it. And oh, then, okay. And then shit on it. So else. so so very chaotic. Yes. Okay. Seems like a character he'd like to play. <laughs> um, so, uh, we went. I, I went over to his house, and um, he uh, he had it so that Kismet met up with my character Rise. And um, at this point, we were in a war effort against uh, a bunch of nightmare lords. Um, Pretty metal. <laughs> yeah, try, essentially just trying to stop the end of the world. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. As you um, do. Yeah. Yeah. No big deal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Got pretty steady. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's, uh, every, it's every game. Right? Yeah, it's it's a nine to five. You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, anyway, so <laughs> so Kismet Kismet came up to um, came up to Rise and he was like, "Hey, you know, you're kind of shit." Wow. Let me let me do this for you. Let me take my hand and I'll offer you something. And uh, so I did. So what Dapper ended up doing was he gave me a few magical items. He let me switch class completely. Okay. So I was I think originally a fighter, rogue, assassin. Or no, fighter, assassin, gunslinger. Gosh. Yeah, it was bad. I should not have done that. That's very unfocused. It's very unfocused, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I I switched from that to just pure gunslinger. So I was like a level 13 or 14 gunslinger. Uh, CR plus 2 template, I think. Um, that made me incorporeal when I moved. Oh, that's cool. Um, uh, I regen health and gain temporary HP from fire damage. Fire damage? From fire damage. Well, why was that? Uh, it was an elemental, like a, a ghost elemental okay. kind of thing. Gotcha. Not a um, fire elemental, but a ghost elemental. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's, it was really weird. I can't remember quite I, off the top of my head. I was head just like, head. I thought that was a strange perk, but I mean, hey, I'll, I take it. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> fire? No problem. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, a few other things. And um, I, uh, it, he made... He made it so that it wasn't just strictly OP, that I would, um, excuse me, uh, I would have to roll a, a will save every day to avoid being chaotic evil. Every day. Every day. And what would happen if you failed? Would you? How many? How could you go back to being? Oh yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. I I I was chaotic good or neutral good, one of the two, and then switched to chaotic evil. So how would that affect you? Uh, like how long? Chaotic evil. That like would that potentially have be uh, able to mess things up? Or oh, it did. It did. I, I, really did. I failed um, one save. I uh, he had me roll it like a handful of times oh, wow. throughout the set, like throughout the games. And so the one time that I did end up failing the will save. Uh, we were in this kind of, I think it was transdimensional tavern, like a, like a halfway, like, situated in the astral plane, like, you had to have a key to get into it, the whole time, like, the whole time, and, um, we were in there, and, uh, I, I failed the will.
will save. So I, I, like, middle of the night, sat bolt upright in my bed, stood up, got my gun, because it was a plus eight speed endless ammo revolver. Oh, God. Yeah. That probably. sounds pretty awesome. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> um, and I walked through the door and uh, just started murdering people. <laughs> like, I just completely lost my mind. Um, oh, no. Walked downstairs. <laughs> you remember Grendel? I do. Fucking blasted his, his no. ass away. And just fucking dead in one no. round. Like, um, he got rest because it was a high level game. Okay. And, like, you know, rests are everywhere. <laughs> okay. Um, but still. Oh, no. dude, Grendel died so many times. Was he angry? No, no. He wasn't angry. No. He was Grendel very understanding? Was, yes. Yeah. Wow, I don't know. I would have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, Grendel died like four or five times. Shit. Yeah, just right. kept on getting brought back. <laughs> You're back here, you scaly little bastard. Um, uh, yeah, I, I went downstairs, just unloaded the entirety of the revolver into, into Grendel, um, started to reload, and uh, the next round, Tiefling's character, being Tiefling's character, Obviously, crit like two or three times in a row. Of course. And then knocked me unconscious. Um, and then after that, I made another will save, and then I came back and worked completely normal. Um, like, hey, hey guys, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, Rise was Rise was fun. Nice. Um, I feel like, oh yeah, I had in the back of my head, there was one character that Dapper made. That I was always sad. Like, I, I know that ultimately, um, the if a person isn't happy with their character, I guess that could be another question too. Like in that case, you wanted to make that character work, right? But but why in that particular character? Because some people, in fact, a lot of people, they say, ah, I don't really like this character. I'm just going to make another one. Right. You know, like sometimes I might be frustrated with the character. I'm like, hey, and I I always joke about this. I always joke. But if we're in a situation where, like, a character dies, I might be okay with it. So right. I can make a new one. I'm like, I'm fine. And and I, I don't know. Maybe that's just the, the, maybe some of the, the games that I've just been in. But, I mean, don't, I mean, I guess you have to, like, kind of take sense of the room. But don't be afraid to kill your characters for the dramatic effect. Right, like, absolutely. If, because I think, I mean, I know you want them to be badasses. But at the same time, if there is never any real danger, and I yes, getting close to death is fine, right. but but I feel like every once in a while it could happen. Oh yeah, absolutely, it could happen. Um, I don't know if at a high enough level how often that does happen though. Like, could there be some case where the reses wouldn't work against a high enough monster? Yes, um, I mean like it all depends on whether the soul that you're trying to resurrect is willing to come back or not. Oh okay, that's a whole other level. It also depends on how Phrasma or whatever the god of death is feeling that day <laughs> like about that particular soul because in Pathfinder's setting uh, Phrasma is very like against raising the dead mm. but she's fine with resurrection mm. um, which is like sort of a temporary thing I guess in yeah. the grand scheme uh, but I, I guess the question would be like do, what do you think would be best do you think that that is what you did would be more acceptable in terms of just saying, hey, let, let's have a one-off session and try to make you feel better about the character? Because there must have been something about that one that made you want to keep going as opposed to disposing it. Because Dapper, I know there was this one character he made that I liked, mostly because of just the the novelty of it. I don't know if you've heard of him, but Gundolf. Oh, yes, like, Gundolf. Yes, thank you. I'm glad that's <laughs> the only one. Like, he, I remember Gundolf. Exactly. Yeah. Like, Gun, I, and that's, that's one I remember. That's one of the most memorable ones. I think I was actually there with him when he made Gandalf. Yeah, Gandalf was cool because, you know, I mean, obviously the play on words, Gandalf with a gun. Yeah. You know, it's funny, but, like, I, I just liked the character. I thought he was fun, but for whatever reason, uh, Dapper wasn't really that into him, which I didn't get because I thought that the couple sessions he was in, he was fine. Yeah. But I guess he just wasn't what he wanted. So instead of tailoring it, he just said, ah, I'm just not going to play with that character anymore and make a new one. Yeah. So I guess, where do you think that should determine when you should make that decision to keep one or not. I, I know for me, uh, the decision I made was based around how well I knew Rise worked with everyone else. Mm -hmm. 
like like RP wise, Rise was friends with like basically the entire party. Uh, I also knew that if I didn't play Rise, I would also have to give up uh, Grendel, and you know I, I can't give up my small man. <laughs> I can't give him up. Uh, and I I knew that if I got rid of Grendel, like the rest of the party wouldn't be really feeling it either. Okay. Because Grendel. Grendel had so many fun RP mm -hmm. opportunities, and he took them all. So people would have missed him. Yeah. All right. So I mean, so you take into account what the group feels as well. Yes. Okay. That that sounds like good advice. Okay. Like, cause clearly, if yeah, that that's kind of how I've been in some situations, um, like where a character might not have gone quite the direction I wanted him to, right? And, and it might have disappointed me, but. If there's enough history with the other characters that they think he's kind of integral to how things run, like there'd be something missing without him there, I'll still keep it going. Right. Like if I th think it's he contributes enough. Right. So. And I think you can definitely work with your DM to an extent. Like if you know that killing your character off would provide better uh, investment for the other for the for the rest of the party mm -hmm. um, to pursue. The, the actual plot. Like, if you guys wander away from the plot too far, and the big bad guy has suddenly amassed enough power to directly confront you, and he attacks, and he kills you, and you can work with the DM behind, like, like out, out of game. Just be like, hey, when you do this, roll a die, as if you're deciding who is going to get hit. And no matter the outcome, target me. That way it will appear to the rest of the party as though it's random. That way they don't feel that it's just being, like, targeted and that you're being railroaded. Okay. So that could... Right. It's the exact same gimmick as, like, you wake up after a, a, a good night's rest, and you find that a pair of your boots is gone. You, someone stole them. You figure out. Like, you don't even have to say, figure out who stole your boots. The party's just going to be like... Hey, those are my boots. Like, I, I need those. Let's, we need to find this guy. There's no like, question. We need to find him. Okay, so you kind of avoid any misperception. Yes. Okay, well, that, that's a good idea. Some things you can kind of keep anonymous. Yeah. Like, really, really can't. Like, say, you might think it is a strategy focused on somebody, but it could be random. Right. And that's the fairest thing of all. Yes. And I think that's, Absolutely. And that, that's common in combat, too. And that, that's one of the great fundamentals, I think, of it that is cool is that 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 is that really that great balance, and I think why D and D is really cool is kind of a interactive experience and teamwork building, as well as just writing and uh, really acting and everything else kind of combined. Is that it's just I don't think there is any type of format for storytelling which is as fluid, right? Because we're all making it up as we go along, and you have like all these really really uh, planned out, well developed characters that people might spend a lot of time building and adding on and strategically planning every single technique. And it still might come to a situation where they aren't as effective. Right, or, yeah, or, absolutely. Like they have specific situations where they're tailored, but it's felt where fairly well balanced, so you still don't know exactly what you're gonna get. And that kind of goes back to our original point with uh, just kind of determining how much to plan and how much it changes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it could, some, some things that you might not even think of based on a character's actions interacting with something you created could be completely different. Right. Completely. Yeah. You know, and, and that is cool. And even in combat, certain certain uh, moves, certain attacks might just randomly hit someone else. The whole whole person with the dice is just okay, well a number against the number. Yeah. And, and you there and we, we have that illusion that it's based around our character's skill and their prowess and their combat ability. But there is a degree of chance there. Oh, absolutely. It just, it just It's kind of hilarious. And I think that may be why it is so balanced. Because you've got all this planning, but it, it doesn't always work out in your favor. Right. Um, with my last session, for example, I had uh, one encounter uh, for, like, planned out. I, I had all the stats down. CR 29 creature. Mm -hmm. 29? Yes. Oh, God. What was it? you got to tell me. It was a kaiju. A kaiju. Oh, which one? It was. <laughs> was it inspired by a particular one? I don't know. It was. Um, it was a. It's called a Borgosan. Okay. Describe and, it uh, to me. It's it's a colossal ooze. Then maybe the smog monster, perhaps. But okay. Um, 
the, the, the lore that came with the sad block was that uh, the Forgozen is like a relatively new kaiju. Uh, its creators are people who are very um, against magic. Hmm. So think like it, it, think of it as like a tribal force okay. almost, like a like a stereotypical magic is bad barbarian. But a bunch of those came together and made news. Probably with magic. Yes. Yeah. Getting Ironically. A, getting a very, like, scar full of Lachmas vibe. I hate alchemists, <laughs> so yeah. I will use alchemy yeah. to destroy yeah. That kind of um, hypocrisy. And uh, it's, it's like, it's stack block itself. It's attacks weren't all that devastating. It's, it's HP was about it. Like, it was just a bullet sponge. Huh. At like 700 HP. Because I know my players, and I know that they all min max the hell out of the yeah, they, You know that they're, they're gonna get through that in no time. Yeah. yeah. Tiefling's one of my players. I know that he's gonna get through it in no time. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why you gotta hit. With his particular characters, like, you, you gotta kinda hit him with something that isn't necessarily based around pure combat range. So you gotta throw, like, a, I don't know, you. Not, an ooze would have been a good one, I would have thought, but maybe like... Yeah, some they're sort of, immune to crits. Yeah, like a, like an undead... They're immune to crits, around. they're... I'm trying to think of... Like this, not a construct, maybe... Uh, elementals are also immune elemental, to crits. Maybe a celestial being... You'd have Aeons. to... Yeah, yeah, get some really weird, like... Like somebody who would be more amorphous, like a, a ghost yeah. or something. Yeah. Some, some powerful creature like that, so that, like, hitting him isn't necessarily, yeah. isn't necessarily, you know... Gotta take them down right away. Right. So you, you sometimes you have to take into account what who's playing who and what type right. of class yeah. they are and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, what I it, <laughs> the one thing that I was banking on, and the one thing that I knew was going to screw with the party, because there's a wizard, there's a war priest, and there's a magus, and then there's a swashbuckler. Oh. Tiefling's the swashbuckler, base is the magus, Nick is the wizard, and the witch is the war priest. A little confusing with that last one, but you know it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, it's fine. That, that, oh. The monikers, <laughs> the monikers do get confusing sometimes. And apparently, did, did you know that uh, apparently Tiefling and Base actually have other monikers that I didn't know about until recently? Really? I mean, well, there was one podcast a little while ago where it was a joke. I thought that keeping with the Merlin theme, I don't know if this is a rebranding structure here, but that apparently a Tiefling, as my co-host sometimes, is King Arthur. Oh, the, the retcon of the mechanic. Uh, he's he, he's King Arthur apparently, and uh, <laughs> and the base separates is Gawain. So uh, I'm like, so I mean there are multiple monikers going yeah. on now. But but yes, the witch is the war priest. Which I've never played a war priest, but I feel like that just that just sounds like a badass class. It's so good. He's he's playing basically a monk mixed with a paladin. So he has flurry blows. Okay. Uh, unarmed strike. But he's also got basically like self buffs as per lay on hands. Okay. So he can he can give himself like uh, like boosts to charisma mm -hmm. uh, with as a swift action, which is like amazing because that's what he uses for his attacks, mm -hmm. his damage, his AC. Nice. Buff himself real quick in combat and then just go at it. Just beast. Yeah. I, um, I guess I was just picturing like a um, what was it? Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was essentially just picturing like an orc guy for some reason. That's actually um, like an orc is the the iconic for the war priest. In, in Pathfinder. In Pathfinder. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay, that's why. I, all right. Well, then I wasn't totally wrong because that's what. I, okay, that's the association. Yeah. But that's awesome. Um, that's really awesome. So basically, a crusader, paladin, esque knight, but with more monk like abilities. Yeah. All right. Um, wow. And uh, Nick is playing a words of power caster which I've never used. I've never even looked into it. It's an alternate magic system. Uh, it's still Van Sam, I think. Um, probably. I, just, mean, I know I've heard of it. He just strings together different words and combines them for an effect. So, for, for example, power word kill would be like power and kill. Two separate words. One is like, one is the modifier and the other is the effect. Okay. So, so you string them together, and suddenly it's a very powerful kill spell. Mm -hmm. And is that something that a woody spell you'd level up? Or is um, that, I feel like that would have a different effect depending on your level, right? It's, I think each word is a different spell level. Okay, so it's like you 
get access to different stages of the word chart, which you could combine. I'm just picturing a chart. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Think of think of like the shouts in Skyrim. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Kill. <laughs> yeah. So like so Power so. Kill. Um, About how nineties can you get? <laughs> so Fusro dies, obviously the full shout. Mm -hmm. But you start off with just Fus, and then you add another word. <laughs> row, and then you add another word, and that's the full effect. Yeah. You can you can just use one word, but it's going to be a very mitigated effect. You can use two words, it's going to be slightly more powerful, but when you string together all three, it's going to be the full thing. It, I'm pretty sure that's how words of power work in Pathfinder. Man, like, um, wow. <laughs> it sounds cool, though. Oh, cool. yeah, absolutely, it is. He, um, he made, like, a 60-foot blizzard do like 15 d6 of cold or something like that per round that you're in it mm -hmm. um that one actually came back to bite him in the ass that was fun yeah. so. he cast that on the first wyvern mm -hmm. and the wyverns that i'm using were an alternate um kind of wyvern they were whip tongue wyverns so they have like 30 foot reach with their tongue mm -hmm. and when they attack you with their tongue they have a chance to grab you because he's a wizard he has really bad cmd uh, well yeah <laughs> so this thing across the chasm looks over at him, grabs him with his tongue, and drags him into into his own blizzard. And then he started dying from cold damage that he oh, cast. That was hilarious. It was so I'm, good. I bet he wasn't happy about that. Oh, no, he was. He rolled with it. Oh. He, was having, he was having a ball. Uh, that's uh, funny. That, that's a... Uh, wow. That's a good move. Yeah. Oh, but the, um, the, the one ability that this kaiju had that I knew was going to mess with him, I just didn't know to the extent, to, to what extent it was going to mess with him. Uh, this thing had a 300 foot aura wherein your magic was altered. So if you cast a spell within uh, within the aura, and the arena was only 200 feet wide, like a, a 200 foot rate, uh, uh, diameter, essentially. Um, so they were in the aura, unless they flew up, but nobody did. Um, oh, so the aura doesn't have a height to it? It's it's like a, a sphere. A sphere. That, that's how I always picture auras. I'm not gonna lie. Did uh, do they actually have it laid out as how? I know that usually there's the the distance, like the circumference. Right. But do they have a height for like how far you can fly to be out of it for an effect? I would assume it's the same. Like if they use a radius, it's the it's same. The full 360 radius. No one's ever really tested that that I can remember. But that is a that's something good to keep in mind. Mm. Go ahead. Um, so. This this altered magic. You roll on a, per, on a on a table with percentiles, and depending on what you roll, you could either have your spell go off as normal, in fact that's like totally fine. Uh, your spell is altered slightly. Uh, your spell is altered slightly, and you need to make a caster check to be able to cast it. Your spell is altered, like majorly, uh, and it is. You have to make a caster check, and it might deal damage to you. Um, and I think the last one was just your spell doesn't go off and it damages you. Or like it damages you, and consumes the spell slot. Okay, so it's basically just different levels of you know successes or failures. Yeah, essentially. All right. Um, well, yeah, that does sound like that could really ruin uh, someone's day. It's like usually yeah. it's just you know it has an effect or it doesn't. Right. Typically. Right. Um, and so I was like, yeah, you know, this is the only monster that they're fighting. You know, there's nothing else in here. They'll be fine. They'll be good. They'll be good. Just a little mucky Godzilla. That's fine. No, it was not good. Ooh. <laughs> Nick. Nick's a level 16 wizard. Mm -hmm. He has 160 health. Everyone else has like 300. Yeah, that monster with CR 29 or something. Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's a big discrepancy. And that's, you know, you really threw that at them? Because, yeah. like, what, they're all that level, right? And Mythic, yeah. I, like... Because I, I know that... I'm actually surprised. I mean, usually I do something like that just for fun, and, you know, it's kind of like, can you survive, run away from the thing? Because a couple I, of levels higher is a bit enough of a difference to be I, dangerous sometimes. I honestly totally expected them to run away. They, like, I, I'm surprised that they did Why didn't they? Were they just kind of like, let's do it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, the way I introduced this thing was um, they got sent into the swamp by a golden dragon who is safeguarding the area and who's actually ruling the, the country or the, like, the plot of land that they're in. Mm -hmm. 
And um, because they're going into hell, they need help from gold dragons because they're lawful good, they're like celestially inclined, they're very close to divinity. Um, they're very nice dragons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so she was like, hey, you know, I'm busy with all of this government stuff. I can't really take care of this. There's a dragon out in the swamp. Go take care of it. He's like poisoning the, the water. He's, he's killing fish. He's killing people. The last group I sent in weren't strong enough. They got killed. Like, go out and like kill this thing, please. Um, and so the way I introduced him was like, <clears throat> they, they walk into this area. It's very clearly just the boss area. Okay. I, I, I drew it out on the map. Um, so they could see it coming. Yes. Yeah, they knew an encounter was coming. All right. Um, so they walk into this area, and uh, they see this black dragon sitting on this uh, swampy horde out on an island on the like in the uh, in the water in the swamp. And it it perks up as they walk in, and it slips into the water like a crocodile does. Oh, no. It starts swimming through the water, and uh, they hear it um, as it comes up to breathe. It starts taunting them. The last group of mortals who came my way perished an awful fate. I'm glad that the local dragon has sent me peace offerings. And uh, did the kaiju choose this? No, it was the, it was the dragon. Okay. Okay. Um, and so as it was making its way towards the shore, in mid sentence it gets cut off and dragged underwater. Oh no! And this kaiju rises up uh, where it was. Oh, plot twist. Yeah. So it was like, a, oh, it's just a dragon, this is super easy, we can kill it, no problem. Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Um, yeah, and I think, I, you remember how I said this thing had like 700 health? Yeah. I, you know, after the first round, I was like, if this thing stays at 700 health, there's no way these guys are going to be able to kill it. Just based on its abilities? Just based on its abilities, based on how much damage they were all doing, because like they only put maybe 160 damage into it the first round. So that's that's a full, almost seven rounds of combat to actually be able to take it down. And in that time, this thing would easily kill them all. <laughs> it, it had six tentacle attacks per round. Six. Yeah. Like... like <laughs> um, and uh, so I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to adjust this health down. So I halved it. So I took it from like 760 to like 380. And um, I didn't, I, I felt like that was really cheap. So I, and I didn't want it to be a cop out. So as the rounds kept progressing, I just kept a mental note of how much, how much damage they were doing per round. What feels like would be a good amount, um, and I think I went like three or four rounds, just hovering at the exact same HP. And I was like, okay, yeah, you know, it, it didn't like that. Um, it's, it's looking a little bit worse for wear. Okay. Uh, so that they weren't like completely, oh, like completely disheartened about it. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> There's another thing that I completely forgot about. I didn't completely forget about it at the time. I just didn't use it because I didn't want to murder things. Like, I didn't want to murder my players outright. This thing had a 1,200-foot uh, line breath attack that dealt 20d6 damage, 20d6 acid damage, and 20d6 bludgeoning damage for a grand total of 40d6. <laughs> and... Uh, I used it towards the end of the fight because I didn't, I, I didn't <laughs> know that this thing could just like mow through them if it wanted to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reading through that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh, that's great. So I used it. It didn't hit anybody, but it left. You know those. You know those YouTube channels, like twenty thousand psi water jet versus whatever. Yeah. And it just cuts through the thing. With like pressurized water. Yeah. That. I, like I described it as just leaving a hole in the in the forest, like for twelve hundred feet that way. Nice. And uh they that were scared all like, them. Oh absolutely. <laughs> they were all like, oh <laughs> oh <laughs> 
John, why are you doing this to us? What are we doing? <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was good. Um, yeah, no, like I, I knew, and it did have relevance to the plot mm -hmm. because after they killed it, um, one of the like there's in my game there are generals in hell that serve the Duke of Hell, who is the, the big, big bad guy. Um, and one of his generals came about in an incorporeal, like, flaming form. Of course. <laughs> yeah, as you do, because I don't want them to mark her right there. You could just be like, you know, a guy, like, you know, just like a little suit. Yeah. You could be like, with an umbrella. Yeah. yeah. Why not? It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I got um, No subtlety. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, didn't, they didn't realize she was, like, bad. Nobody ever asked for a detect evil. Nobody ever was like... This is basic stuff. Yeah, like, you just <laughs> killed this giant kaiju thing. You're in a swamp hey. full of evil things. Maybe. I described it as a will-o'-the-wisp, but green. Like a sickly, disgusting, evil-looking green. Because I, she's a witch fire. Which is a template that you can apply to witches. Um, and she's, she's pretty badass, too. I'm really excited to throw her at them. Because... Have you ever played a witch? I have. I have. I actually did it really, really, really enjoy playing a witch. Yeah. Witch might be my favorite class to play. Um, by Rigo was her name. Um, I based her off of the Hobgoblin in Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she she was great because uh, fun character to play. Just so many cool uh, spells and, and curses and cantrips. Like I, I describe. I describe witches as basically that's the class you want to play when you just want to fuck over the DM. Yeah. Like literally, yeah. I, I'll love it. Like the evil eye, bongle. Like you know, like I, I want so this. Good. I, 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 so good. He, he he does this. No, he doesn't. <laughs> 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 and that's like, do you do that? Yeah. How long does it last? Oh, like, it, hey, indefinite. Indefinite. Yeah. Uh, minus twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. So, so, such a trolling... What, what, what level was she? I don't, I don't know, uh, how far did I get? I want to say we probably got to, like, level 5 or 6. Now imagine that, but level 20. Broken. Oh, hell yeah. Broken! Hell yeah. Hell yeah like, dude. why even play? Why play? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I know that just by herself, she would get wrecked. Mm -hmm. She would just get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I'm actually reusing the stats... And a little bit of the backstory of Rise. Uh, once again. After after the rewrite, <laughs> to be her like companion, her bodyguard. All right. And um, I'm really excited to see how they deal with that, because um, Tiefling does almost exclusively fire damage, so he's going to get healed every time he gets hit. Nice. Um, now, fortunately, Nick is like an ice wizard, so. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's nice. nice. That's nice. Variety. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't know what all base does. He, he doesn't. He's, he's taking a really like backseat approach to this game, which is a little disheartening. But I, I think he can pull through. I, I think he's having fun. Oh, all right. Um, well, sometimes, sometimes you just, you know, if you want to hang out, you just kind of play that character that's just there to kind of hit things. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so that's fine. It just depends, you know. Yeah. To be uh, honest, some people really, um, really like focusing on that. Like they, uh, I remember Adam was really. I think he played. Uh, he was just an orc barbarian once. So I think it was one of his favorite characters. He just, he just loved cleaving. Yeah. It's like he loved raging. Like yeah. he was just there to do that. Like yeah. I'm an orc. I I'm here to fuck things up. Yeah. And, and that was it. And you know, so whatever makes you happy. Honestly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, like I mean, you don't don't pressure people into RPing too much. But, right. Yeah. You know, some people are more. Yeah. I think that's one of the advantages of playing the, um, I don't know, like some of those characters you might feel like you don't have to. But I know trolls sometimes he'll he'll like to you know play like the caveman characters and yeah. stuff and finds way to finds ways to give them characterization. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you can do it for sure. Yeah. Sometimes the sometimes it's all about RP. Like I think you know Shere Khan. I think from you know, my last game, uh, Gim one of Gimli's favorite characters. I think he mentioned that last time. You know the. Rat folk with the mithril pods, yeah. and just yeah. all he does that, that's his main thing is like it's mostly out of combat stuff, but he's he's very integral because he's just there economically, too, right? So, yeah. so I mean, yeah, it, however you want to play it, can work. 
Yeah. Sometimes just um, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really like excited to see their reactions to oh this is just Rise I know how to fight Rise uh, but but then not being able to apply that knowledge because it's metagaming mm-hmm. don't, don't yeah. want to metagame yeah don't want to metagame uh, however they could in theory roll of knowledge religion because you know Duke of Hell and, but well, and General of Hell maybe hopefully maybe I, I they don't knowledge rolls are so important exactly but, but people, nobody ever does them I don't get that that's the one thing I don't get like I that's the part I like is like ooh and that not not only will that help you out in combat, sometimes that can help you out with the lore. I mean, right. and the more you learn about it, that could help you out. Yeah, exactly. But, and I mean, if you're a good DM and you pay attention to that detail, the I guess that you both have to kind of be attentive to that. Yeah. But but you're right. Knowledge rules, guys. Yeah. Sometimes like they really they really make a difference. They do. Honestly. And perception, don't ever <laughs> disregard perception. Though, I forget what's I forget if you said this or if it was Tiefling. No, I think Troll said this. I, I think I jokingly asked, is there any role that really isn't useful? Like maybe an ability role? And I mean, in all honesty, I think I think I was kind of joking, like, okay, maybe there are ones that maybe the certain characters, but I think every single role you make potentially could be useful. I mean that's the point. Like I don't know, like if you like if you craft and you crit on a crit like I have to go down the character sheet again, but like, um, like obviously if you crit fail or something, yeah. But that's not what right. I, I meant yeah. potentially. Like, are there any like abilities, like any any uh, I, skills that might not be good or? I want to say like, if you fail your bluffs, your bluff check, you can just talk your way out of it. If you've got a high enough diplomacy. I always kind of uh, overlap those stuff. Like, I mean, if you're if you're in a situation where you are trying to bluff and you fail that, that you failed the bluff. And you Caught. Right. So I, I always kind of... And then diplomacy is then trying to talk your way out of it. Okay. Like, y- yes, okay. Okay. I admit okay. that I was lying. Okay. However, I was uh, lying because... All right, that's getting creative with it. Like, I feel like a lot of games I've been in, oh, you, you lied to the guard, you're dead. But, right. But isn't the point... Uh, then you have to go the off chance. Okay, well, that would depend if it's, like, not an evil creature or... Evil, right, like, right. Okay, maybe if it's a n- more neutral situation, then you could diplomatically talk your way out of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so bluff, I, so bluff isn't really. I still say that's useful because oh, absolutely. Actually, because if you pass yes. the bluff, you don't have to go that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Actually, are there any? I feel like climb never really gets used. It's always like, yeah, I throw my rope. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I throw my rope down the chasm and I climb down. <laughs> okay. Do you all do that? Yeah. That's fine. You all make it down. But but in that case. Okay, you're right. That that must be something people don't generally care about. But that depends on how difficult you want to make everything. Right. And a lot of times in our group, we kind of bypass a lot of the little things like that. But sometimes those can be interesting, and usually they result in some of the most comedic moments. Like if everybody was forced to do a climb check, right. and some people did fail. Yeah. Usually, usually when that happens, like okay, I use strength check to grab and get him back and help him. But like, what if? What if you? Like crit fail on a climb check, and it's like a massive gap, and then you fall and you take damage. Right. You know, like that happens sometimes, but you're right, not not very often. Not not nearly often enough. Okay, but um, still useful. Like me. Oh, if, absolutely. If you put it into yes. effect, but you're right. That you know, that isn't used as much as it probably could be. Yeah. Um. I feel like survival in games that aren't level like two or three. Like level five and up survival, just nixed. I think survival, survival can be fun, but like unless you put your characters in a situation early on where they really are like devoid from civilization, yeah. like because I'll be honest, I, I sometimes I, I I like to think of survival as um, I mean I guess you could use other roles for that more like literally survival techniques like yeah for hunting yeah. or gathering for the. Or even fire. Just tying a knot. Tying a knot. Like that that could be a survival. I feel like generally we roll survival it's just like, you know, for a ranger, like trying to find the direction. But a lot of times I'm like, Well, you've got to go to the city. Right. You're probably along the main road. Yeah. It's probably not too hard to get lost. Yeah. But so I do think survival is kinda like Yeah. yeah. And in the same vein, <laughs> um, swim honestly isn't used almost at all. All right. Unless all right. you're in a very right. specific right. campaign setting. It's just not, like it's never used. You're right. You're right. You. That's one of those ones, and 
once again taking into account the game you want to play and also the characters. But you're right. I, rem I do remember a time, though, that we did say that. That was years ago where, like, oh, nobody ever used to swim. And then we did have that whole campaign where we actually went on the first of one of the many infamous uh, boating ones across the sea, which now almost every game has a moment like that. Right. Because they, they're fun. Is that, is that the one where you fought the Kraken? Or uh, the giant crab? Yes. Yeah. I believe the Kraken. I believe. What was the Kraken? I think it was the Kraken the first time. Because that was the first one Gimli was ever in. Right. With his sorcerer, yeah, with the, uh, the chef, with the, the lightning. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, that that was the <laughs> that was the first time where we were like we a bunch of us got thrown into the ocean and none of us knew swim, so we all were just like struggling half the combat right. to get out of water. Yeah. So ever since then, I mean, we always put a couple points in there because you're right. You're right, you know. Right. It's generally speaking it will not come up, but there may be an instance where you need right. to know how to yeah. swim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, Kind of like, you know, in real life. It's probably good to know how to swim. Yeah. Even if you don't do it that much. Yeah. Swimmer. Yeah. I, I will respect. And hope respect. Swimmer. Fencer. Dancer extraordinary. God, I wish. Uh, I let's can't see. dance to save my life. Uh, actor. Yeah. Director. Yeah. It's, it's there. Well, Artist. Artist. Um, so illustrator. Photographer. Yeah. Uh, man. Man of many talents. Uh, Hi, that's me. Man. How do you feel about the jack of all trades, master of none thing? Because I mean, like something like a, a bard, for instance. I feel like they got a lot of flack because of that, but I feel like they can be enjoyable to play. I think it depends on how you play them. Just if you're given a sheet mm -hmm. full of mechanics and numbers, and you know how to interpret those numbers and mechanics, <laughs> that that's that's all fine and well. Um, like unless you have character to give those stats. <laughs> you're, you're not going to have fun playing it. Yeah, I, I remember, I, I think that was that was probably the biggest example of you want, you're right, a character being made that the player didn't really fully understand what went into it. Right. And, you know, out of combat, they weren't really that useful. And they tried to have fun with that, but they, they lost interest pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, I think I've played a bard once or twice, and I fully accept that. That I'm pretty much just there to bump people. Yeah. But hey, I'm the rock and roll support. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, I got my fiddle. I got, you know, I'm chronicling. That's a uh, Gimli's brother. Uh, he's he's a scribe, but he he's not really a bard. But he he's fully into that characterization. Like, hey, you know, like, yeah, once you're right, play that character. So if you if you're willing to have fun with it, <laughs> that's fine. Right. But there will be moments where your character will shine. Uh, I never got to a point where I was high enough level for it, but I did hear that, like pretty much every other class, once you get to pretty high levels, bards are pretty cool. They're so much fun. But but what what point is the threshold for that? I think... I feel like it's a while. I think usually it's around, like, level 12. Okay. Level 12 and above is, like, it really seems to be high, like, that, late game. That magic number. Yeah. Like, 7 to 12 is, like, mid game, mm -hmm. uh, 1 to 6 is early game, and 12 and above is late game. That's right. I'd say... Nah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. What's the, the highest you guys have gotten? Uh, like from beginning to... Oh, from beginning to, to end? end? Uh, level 1 to level 13 or 14, I think. It's pretty good. I feel like most games I've played, uh, I, I think we're usually going on the medium track. Yeah. But I, I played some pretty long-running games where we only got up to like the later time. Yeah. You know, which, I mean, man, like, you know... That's still something that I kind of wish that we could do, like, at some point, and I don't know if it, it'll happen, but, uh, like, just a long, long-running games that do go on for years and years. Right. Because they're consistent. That are consistent, because, I mean, maybe that's just, like, you know, real-world scheduling, because we've had, we've definitely had some games that have lasted quite a while. Right. Like, but, like, uh, Trolls Space Game. Yeah, yeah, his Space Game, which is kind of branching off from the, a couple previous games, actually. Right. Uh, so he, that one's kind of been long running, but that hasn't been consistent. That's right. Like, that's like once or twice a year. Now it is. Yeah, he, he wants to keep it special, but uh, I don't know. I kind of wouldn't mind playing more of it though. Oh, absolutely. I feel like I'd be a lot more invested in my character. Like, I'd yeah. be a lot more invested in the game if it were more consistent. Yeah, because you well, know, that that's part of the problem too. You don't remember as much, but but yeah, but that's true. I feel like I've had I've been in some games where the campaigns have lasted maybe like a year or so. Right. But but breaking past that point, I don't know. People just. Uh, 
get kind of bored with that eventually. And I mean, obviously, uh, the DM might get burned out oh, too. Oh, absolutely. After, after a while, absolutely. Like we, <laughs> there was a point where we were playing so many games at once. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it would maybe th that's the key. Maybe not making it so consistent, but consistent enough. Right. Like, like twice a month. Maybe. At, like at least maybe three times a month if you're really feeling it that month. Yeah, maybe. Like, that, that's possible. I mean, I, I just know that there are groups that have been going on. I, I actually met some people at work uh, a little while ago that a bunch of them were, like, D&D players, and they were a bit older than me. But they, they were in a group that had been playing for, like, same characters, same world campaign for, like, four or five years. Like, straight. And I'm like... That's Damn, insane. That's, and they must have spread it out. Like, I can't imagine that they... They must have been going either slow path or... Oh, maybe yeah. once or twice a month, but they made it where they they were playing pretty consistently for a long time. Right. I'm like that. That's impressive. Yeah. Like not only to just keep it up that long, but to not to to not really get burned out or bored on it. Like, right. Man. Yeah, like, and I mean, even Dapper's game, like that lasted a year and a half. I think it's pretty good. And, and that was the the one the the level one through like thirteen fourteen, mm -hmm. like man. Um, but it's like it's kind of like that. That's it's kind of like a, a little pathfinder like dream I have is like that, yeah. to, to be able to like maybe not even necessarily have it last that long, but to be able to see that amount of growth. See, start at level one, yeah, classic D and D, and just get get up to like level twenty. Just yeah. I want I want to get to the full twenty. Yeah. But but not do it too fast. Right. Because I don't I, because if it if we level up too quickly. Then I, I don't feel like I'm as involved with the lore, or the characters, or the story. It's like you gotta earn it. You gotta yeah. earn it. Yeah. So yeah, no, that that is, that that is hard to do. I, I feel like some people do it, but. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if I would be able to do that. Yeah, I mean that's commitment right there. Yeah. But either as a player or as a DM. Yeah, I'm I feel like like personally, I I don't know. I think I could be a player longer than a DM if it were that long. Yeah. Like I Oh, absolutely the same. Like when I when I DM I, I do like to go make sure that one quest or one campaign is done. Mm -hmm. I like to try and see it through. But then if I feel like there's a logical stopping point I could take a break. Right. But as a player I feel like I could do it a lot longer. Yeah. Maybe it's because there's less thought. There's there's a lot less preparation for the players. Mm -hmm. Like you definitely need to like look over your character sheets, remember what you do remember how you play the character. <laughs> um, like if you've got any voices or any mannerisms that you use with your hands when you talk to them or, <laughs> or any certain inclination towards one uh, outcome over another or, or how you answer certain questions. Um, but that is so much less work than you have as a DM. Yeah, I've been, I've been thinking I kind of want to run a game again at some point, but I don't know. I know, I know Gimli's really been liking his right now. I know yeah. that Troll started up another one too. So Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that goes somewhere. I hope so. I hope so. It's just uh we'll, we'll hopefully stick through it, but uh, we'll see. It's been pretty good. We're trying to bring in new players when we can. Yeah. So yeah. we're trying to. Heck yeah. But uh, you know, it's still a thing. <laughs> um let me see. Yeah, are, let's are you afraid? Where are, we at? are you afraid? Yeah, where are we at? Let's see. Now we're thirteen, that's well, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. That, that's really not bad. Um well, yeah, man. I, I that's all I got for right now. What you have anything else you have to add, or any other final topics? I mean, I know you said you got a little bit of time. Anything else? No, oh, I'm sure I did. I have now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I had them at one point. <laughs> they're, they're, in the, they're in the mental briefcase. Somewhere. Yeah, they're, yeah. They are in the uh, DM bag of holding. Yes. Uh, we're all old. Potential game ideas <laughs> go to be rescinded at some point. All right, man. Well, uh, I guess that seems like a good logical ending point for a, yeah. a podcast. Yeah, that uh, seems pretty good. If you had, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Not not a record. That, that still goes it's, to the... It's definitely not. It, yeah. the, the last one we did, when was, uh, which uh, was here at Gimli. Yeah, that was, what, two? Two and a half? Uh, it was like 145. Uh, 145, I believe. Was it 145? Well, long, yeah, longest podcast I've recorded with you guys. That was Combo. Uh, you can even uh, watch it. I'll maybe even link it. Uh, yeah, plug that so other video. Be, uh, I, I don't actually know whether it's in this corner or that corner, so uh, it's up here. It, it'll it'll <laughs> be 
or also in the description it, below. It'll be in one of these buttons over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, of, um, it was combination uh, D and D discussion, Pathfinder, and some Star Wars ranting. So that was yes. Good. That yes. was Gimli's angry rants. Was good. Uh, but yeah, I, if Dickie had a channel, I would plug it right now. But I don't. He's just so, he's just yeah. a, a YouTube. I'm just a freeloader. <laughs> you're, you're, you know, guest, champ, you know, contributor, yeah. it's fine. No, well, no. I mean, you could always make a channel. But what, would, what would it be about? That's a good question. Um, probably art. Probably, like, analyzing some famous uh, designs, like character designs, setting designs. Actually, that reminds me. Stuff. I think you gave me a video ID we were supposed to collab on. Uh, was it uh, Nosferatu or something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was either... Cal 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 Caligari. Caligari. Yeah. Well, maybe sometime. I'd like to. I, I still got... I'd love to do that. I'm actually kind of want to go back and focus on reviewing on some older films. So oh yeah, might might, might be some uh, some future content for the channel. But in any case, uh, I know you'll be going back to school soon. Um, I, I'm going to try and get you to review the Meg with us. Yes. Hopefully. So oh, I am very excited for that. So, so if you guys yeah. are listening to this point, uh, we might be reviewing the Meg because, to be honest, we're at that point in the summer where like most of the movies that I was interested in seeing have been done now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then after they're that, all it, summer feels very front loaded. It was this time, uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately most of the fall is things that I feel obligated to see as a fan, but yeah. but like, you know, am I really excited about Venom or Aquaman? No. Not, not really, but no. I'll probably review on the channel, but the Meg, just see, that's a whole other bit. Venom looks so bad, dude. It does, but <laughs> never, never it could be good. Anyway, um... Dickie, thank you again. Yes, of course. Thank uh, you for having me. Maybe I'll see you in another video soon, and I'm sure podcasts in the future. Oh, heck yeah. And on that note, I am going to end it. Everybody, stay magical.